In this short video, we explain what crofters' duties are. It is a crofter's duty to reside within 32 kilometres, which is 20 miles, of their croft. That is as the crow flies, not by road. A crofter has a duty not to misuse or neglect the croft. Misuse occurs when a tenant crofter's use of the croft does not come under the definition of either cultivation or a purposeful use as agreed by the landlord. Purposeful use means any planned and managed use which does not adversely affect the croft, the public interest, the interest of the landlord or the use of adjacent land. If a landlord withholds their agreement to a tenant's proposed purposeful use or fails to respond to a tenant's request within 28 days or imposes unreasonable conditions, a crofter can apply to the crofting commission for consent. Neglect is where the crofter fails to manage the croft in a way which meets the standards of good agricultural and environmental condition referred to in the Regulation 4 of the Cromwell Agricultural Policy Scheme's Cross Compliance Scotland Regulations 2004. Conserving the natural beauty of the croft or its flora or fauna does not count as neglect. A crofter's duty to cultivate and maintain the croft includes the use of a crop for horticulture or for any purpose of husbandry, including keeping or breeding of livestock, poultry or bees, the growing of fruit, vegetables and the like, and the planting of trees and the use of the land as woodlands. A suspected breach of duty can be reported by a grazing committee, a grazing constable, a crofting commission appointed assessor, or a member of the crofting community in which the croft is situated. If a suspected breach of duties is reported to the Crofting Commission, they will write to the crofter concerned, asking for comments on the suspected breach, and may then ask the local ARPID office to provide a report, for example, on what condition the croft is in. The Crofting Commission then assess all the available information, and if satisfied that the duties are being complied with, then there is no further action. However, if Crofting Commission think that the duties are not being complied with, then, unless they think there is a good reason not to, they will send a notice to the crofter telling them that they consider the duties are not being complied with and giving the crofter 28 days to make representations to the Commission. What can the crofter do next if there is a breach of duty depends on what the breach of duty is. If they are not living within 32 kilometres, they can agree to move back closer to or live on the croft. Alternatively, a tenant crofter can apply to the crofting commission for consent to assign or sublet the croft. If an owner occupier, they can apply for consent to let the croft to a croft tenant or give somebody a short term let of the croft. The crofting commission will be looking for a more permanent solution at the end of a sublet or short term let, which are both for a maximum of 10 years. Although the Commission's policy is normally only to grant consent for up to five years, although every case is decided on its own merits and individual circumstances. It is also possible to apply to the Crofting Commission for consent to be absent. This is a short term solution where the crofter has a definite, reasonable time scale to take up residence within 32 kilometres. After the period of agreed absence, the crofter will have to go with one of the longer term solutions covered previously if the breach of duty has not been resolved. If the breach of duty is misuse or neglect, the crofter will be asked for proposals to rectify whatever is considered to be the misuse or neglect. The Crofting Commission do not like to see crofts being taken from crofters. They would far rather reach an agreement on how the breach can be rectified. So don't ignore the Crofting Commission if they write to you regarding a possible breach. Check out the letting, assignation, subletting and short-term let videos if required.